Hey YouTube, I'm Abby Shelton with Deviant Racing, and today we're gonna to be doing the fenders on my Bronco Raptor. So the fenders that we're gonna be putting on are the ADV fiberglass four and a half inch fenders. If you're new here, thanks for tuning in. We're going through a full build for my Bronco Raptor. So there have been a couple videos that you can go back to and watch kind of a, an overview of what all we're gonna be doing to this thing and a video on the bumper um, removal and install. If you're a returning viewer, thank you guys for coming back. We really appreciate everybody that follows along. The reason we're doing fenders is because I really don't like the way the Bronco Raptor fenders look. They're not as bad on the black. I was a little worried when we first, um, when I first bought it, I thought I would hate it and want to rip these off like right away, but the black blends in a little bit, but I still don't love it. So we're going to be putting those on and then we're also going to be putting 40s. So it'll help with some of the clearance. One thing I was really happy about with the fenders is you still get the look of the Raptor with the fenders and we're gonna be color matching fenders. I really debated doing a wrap, but decided we're just gonna keep it black, glossy black. So let's get into this install. We're gonna start by disassembling the front of the vehicle. Start by popping out the valence. This is just held in by clips. Then you'll move to the front grill. This is also held in by clips. So just pull and pop it out. And then there will be a wire that you will need to disconnect. For the headlight, there will be two top bolts and one bottom bolt, as well as a tab that you will need to pop out. When you remove the headlight, there will also be a plug on the back that you need to disconnect. Now you're gonna take a 10 millimeter socket and a 13 millimeter socket to remove the steps. And then we're gonna take off the tires to just give us more space to work underneath. There's quite a few of these push pin screws, which are really difficult to get out. You have to put just the right amount of pressure for them to actually unscrew. So this part can be really discouraging, but hang in there, you'll get them all out. a 10 millimeter socket to unscrew the bolts holding the fender on. You'll also need to remove the door because there's three of these push pins behind the door. Once you have those out, the fender should come right off. Now's the fun part. We're unboxing the new advanced fiberglass four and a half inch fenders. Before you do anything with your fenders, you need to make sure that they fit correctly and that they're not damaged. You will not be able to return these fenders if you start drilling the holes on these. So make sure everything fits, that you're happy with them, that you like the way they look, and then you can start the install process. And you should be able to follow the guide on the fender. There's little marks where the holes need to go. A few of ours were missing. So make sure when you're fitting your fenders, you're also marking. We just used a little pin to mark where we were gonna want to drill out. And that really just helped make sure that we got everything we needed. Then you can start putting the fender on and trying to make sure that everything lines up straight. So we lowered the hood, made sure that everything looked like a straight line. Then we got into the headlights. And when you're doing the headlights, you might need to make a little bit more room for your headlight to fit properly. So we put these on, then looked, we needed a little bit more. So again, we're just using this um, Dremel to make these fine tuning adjustments to the fenders. For the most part, you don't have to do much, but we did have to do some. Then 
then to attach the front valence, you're gonna have to take these plastic pieces and remove the tabs or these aren't gonna fit anymore. So after you remove the tabs, you can see that these now fit in this space right here. You'll need to drill through this and put an insert so that you can attach these to the fender. Now that the front fenders are installed, we are moving to the rear. To do this, you'll start by opening the passenger door and removing this rubber seal that's held on by push pins. If you open the rear door where the hinges are, there's, there's another rubber seal. This is held on by the push pin screws that are really tricky to get out. So again, take your time. You have to apply just the right amount of pressure to get these out. Once you've removed the rubber seal, then you'll be able to see the bolts. After you get all of the ones in the rear removed, then you can do the top bolts and the ones in the door. These take the same sockets as the front fenders did. You'll also want to do the inner fenders. Again, these are the same as the front inner fenders. And then underneath the tail light, there's two bolts that are hidden in that back corner. Make sure you get both of those and then the fenders should remove. You'll move to the other side and repeat the same steps. Once you have the fenders removed, it's the same steps as the front. So instead of repeating them, you can go back and watch the front if you have any questions. But you'll wanna start with fitment, make sure everything lines up before you start drilling. The trickiest part on the rear fenders is going to be the gas tank door. The bottom of the hole is cut out a little bit more. You can wedge the door kind of through that at an angle, start at the bottom and then build up. It's a tight fit, but you should be able to make it work. Remember, you can use your Dremel if you need to make any additional space. And again, you'll wanna make sure that that the fitment around the rear headlights has enough space. We had to sand this out instead of using the Dremel because it was really minor adjustments. So we just used sanding paper. There's one more piece here that will be installed on the rear that goes right here. So these are the door pieces that kind of go, um, this one, yeah. So it'll go like right there on the door. That'll complete the look. We're gonna install these after they get painted. Um, so you'll see those on the final install video. And then these are the rear corner pieces. Same thing, we will drill out this hole here and these two holes here. And then we're gonna have it painted before we do the final install of these. And then this is the little piece that goes on the gas tank door. And then we also need to install the inner fenders, but we've got the holes drilled out here. After these get painted, then we'll install the inner fenders. Here we are with both fenders installed and the 40 inch tires. We will do another video on the two inch lift springs and the tire install. And then we'll also show once the fenders are painted, we'll come back and show a full video of the final product. Now, originally we ordered the four and a half inch fenders, which is what's here on the front. However, they were, in my opinion, too narrow for the 40 inch tires on the rear. So I actually went back and ordered the seven and a half inch fenders on the rear, which is what you'll see in this video here. I think this is all personal preference. I know most people wouldn't mix a four and a half inch fender with a seven and a half inch fender, but I feel like they look really good together. I'm really happy with what, how this turned out. So you'll see here on the seven and a half inch rear fender, it comes almost to the edge of the tires. The four and a half inch fenders are gonna hit about in this area here. So it's a good three inch difference between the two. Final product for us, we've got the four and a half inch fenders on the front, seven and a half inch fenders on the rear. And guys, I'm so happy with how this turned out. So we'll come back and launch a couple more videos to complete our Bronco Raptor series. Make sure you like and subscribe to be notified when those videos drop. And thank you guys so much for following along. We really, really appreciate you guys.